Do you find yourself as a trader consistently making the same mistakes and holding yourself back from being truly profitable? Well, inside this video, I'm going to give you the eight common mistakes option traders are making that are limiting their success and slowing themselves down on their journey. And hopefully you can recognize them, prepare for them. And if you can do that, hopefully you can get to go where you want to faster on this journey in the options world and in the stock market. All I ask is you subscribe and like the video. You know the drill. I'm just here out to make you better. And every single Sunday, we're releasing our three top option plays, which are pretty fire, so you don't want to miss those. First off, out of the money options, mistake number one. You think it'd be obvious. Wall Street Bets shows that these are the most degenerate type of options that people are buying on there. And still, people don't understand the dangers of them. So let me explain this to you very concisely, very quickly. Out of the money options on Robinhood have a button that you can look at. If you click sell, this category here changes to chance of profit, which means your chance of profiting as an option seller. So you subtract this from 100, that's your chance of profiting as an option buyer. So if you bought this option for Roku, $123 call expiring one day out, you have a 92% chance of not making money. So 8% chance of losing or making money. If you have those odds in your favor, 8%, you're never going to succeed in the options world, even if you nail the move. Because the problem is, if you nail the move and the direction is correct, it's likely not to move in that magnitude for you to make money. So even if you're correct and you guess the direction, out of the money options, simply don't pay those traders in some scenarios. This is because you have to pay attention to that chance of profit or chance of out of the money. And this is easily seen on Robinhood just by clicking the sell button. So options around 60 or 50 percent chance of profit are the ones i specifically am trading so i trade those i swing those and i scalp those i don't mess with anything in the 70 80 90 percent chance of profit which means it's going to be a 10 20 or 5 percent chance of me profiting as the option buyer so again you have to subtract this by 100 to see your statistics as the buyer not the seller and the option over here also has a lot of stats, which are going to make this even more apparent on why you can really not profit if you're buying out of the money options. Number one, volume is going to be very low, typically. Number two, theta is going to be really high, meaning you're basically going to lose your whole amount of money overnight in some cases, or even throughout the day in some cases. So those two stats right there are just the difference maker between a good trade and a bad trade. So we'll talk about that in a second too. So other mistake traders are making is buying zero day options. So I'm just going to say it. If you're new or if you're experienced in the options world, don't buy zero day options. There's nothing good that can come out of it long term. If you don't have a good strategy, if you can't take a stop loss, if you don't have self control, I see people I've personally done it blow up their accounts on zero day options, boom, it's gone very quickly. And it's because they move so fast, you're caught off guard and you think, hey, I just doubled down, I'll be fine. But the problem is these options are decaying completely the whole day. And every single hour you're holding it, minute you're holding it, you're fighting that decay. So even if you're right, just like we showed you with out of the money options, you need to be right at a certain magnitude and velocity to make money. So let me really nail this point home. This 117 strike on Roku is out of the money. And it's only one strike out of the money, which means it's about a 70% chance of profit, which is around 32 for you as the option buyer. 32 is still very low. And let me make this even more apparent. If we were buying this option and it expired in one day, which is tomorrow, which is the option I'm looking at here, this option would have $0 of intrinsic value because intrinsic value is this price minus the strike price. So the share price has to be higher for us to have intrinsic value because the share price is lower. This option is completely worthless, period. If the stock doesn't move, 
This option has no value. The only value is time value, which means this $154 of the option is basically the time on it, which means that $154 is gonna be gone by tomorrow if the stock doesn't move. That's a, that's a very expensive option to buy that has zero value. So this is stuff we wanna stay away from is out of the money options that are very close to expiration. And hopefully those two points drove it home. So zero day options, again, just from that example alone are dangerous because they have no value, especially if we're out of the money and they just they excessively lose value every single hour. I'll grab the free option course link below. We're talking about options, everything. This is a free course to help you on your journey and we consistently update it. So if you wanna see the latest updates, grab it link below. The other thing is option traders never think about option selling and I was the same way. It took me multiple years to sell an option and I started selling an option and I realized this is the easiest money I've ever made. For In some instances, you can make this capital 100% guaranteed. A covered call and a cash secured put, you're 100% guaranteed the capital if you sell it because the only thing that happens at the time of expiration is you buy the stock, you sell the stock in each scenario or it expires out of the money. In all those scenarios, you keep the premium as the option seller. So it's some of the easiest money if you know how to utilize it but obviously technicals are important and timing this where you pick up the stock, where you put this on is very important too. So let me show you one example. We just talked about Roku. We talked about how it's gonna expire massively tomorrow, how this option is gonna be worthless at the time of expiration if the stock doesn't move. The opportunity is in the option seller's hand, not the option buyer's hand. At this point, if you thought Roku is gonna stay under 117, Instead of buying this option here, you sell it, short it, and then you buy the option above that creates a call credit, call debit spread. This means that you are collecting a premium of maybe $48. So you're risking 50 bucks to make 50 bucks. And you have a, like we showed you earlier, you have a 70% chance of making 50 bucks, only risking 50 bucks. So instead of going complete degenerate mode, trying to make 500%, 1,000%, why not? Just pick up Chipotle money, go to Chipotle and feed yourself and your family. This is why I like option selling and credit spreads are bringing me in three, $400 a week. Um, they're my most consistent income stream right now. So I really like this in this sideways market. It's honestly perfect. And I like doing it on stocks. I am very good at following. So I, I've been following Home Depot, Facebook, Arc, Square as stocks to sell credit spreads on. And so this is a credit spread. But the biggest mistake I made in my option trading journey is just waiting too long to start doing this. And once I started doing it, that's when I started to see some success. I don't know the correlation, but it's been pretty crazy. Bread Alerts is a great site if you want to maximize option selling. They have an option selling tab for covered calls and cash secured puts, as well as a spreads tab. So if you're interested in maximizing spreads, you know, this is a 50% possible return maximum. They do have spreads that you can sort for 60, 70, maybe 80% return if you're selling them. The other big mistake people are doing with options is swinging options with extreme theta. And this generally relates to an out of the money option with too little time till expiration. So with those two factors together, you can lose 30% of your account value overnight just from time decay. And let's say the option moves or the stock moved against you in the wrong way. You can lose 70% of the options value just overnight. So people getting into options, swing their whole account, and then they can't control what happens with the stock, but they can control like the option decay. And so something you can control not being looked at can sink your account if you don't understand it. So the only reason you have to know this is because theta is listed on every option. So you can calculate the percent loss if it does just pass one day passes and that's how much you're losing so 154 dollars is the cost of that roku option theta is 90 bucks so that's about 60 percent 
of 40% of his op, no, like 70% of his options value. So instead of the 30% rule I have here, I mean, even 20% is way too much, 15% is way too much. This is 70. So you can't beat that with a move. Like the, the move, the gap up that would need to happen on Roku would need to be, you just look at Delta divided by Theta. So about $2. So Delta is 46, Theta is 90. It's about $2. So Roku needs to gap up two bucks just for you not to lose money in the trade when the bell opens on the next day. So if, if you're swinging high theta options, it's really going to be tough to beat that. And that's the only reason is because anything around 20, 30% is going to be insanely hard to beat. And you never want to have a trade where you can be right and still lose money because it's so hard just to be right, period. But if you're right and you're losing money, that's something you could have controlled. And if you can't figure out how to control it, that's your fault. The other thing, huge mistake, is avoiding these low liquidity trades. I see traders all the time just entering into a stock and putting a trade on an option, but then not realizing that there's no buyers and sellers. So when you're entering in these low liquidity option chains, you're losing money every time you get in and out. And the more contracts you have, the more capital you have, the more you can lose because there's just a, a very minimal amount of option buyers and sellers. And that can really make you buy it at a premium and then sell it at a major loss premium. So here's a EFA option. Don't even know what this is. There was two contracts traded today for 25 open interest. They cost $13. You can see the bid ask spread here is $10. And 16 so the buyers are down here sellers are down here so there's a massive difference on the bid ask spread if you had a thousand dollars to put in this option chain cost 10 bucks to get in you need about a hundred contracts i believe ten thousand yeah a hundred maybe let's say even a thousand contracts there's not even any volume or any open interest that would allow you to fill that easily and the only way people get filled on bad options or option chains is if you're trying to buy it at a premium because that's the only way sellers or buyers are interested is, is if you're putting in your order at a stupid, stupid price and they're going to just you know, make money from that because they're selling it at a premium. So if you were trying to get into this trade, let's say you had 100 contracts, you have to put it at 0.16 or 0.15 to get filled. There's likely no buyers in between the spread because there's no volume on this option. And so if you put it in at 116 or, or 16 and then you sell it, you have to get out. It was a bad trade. You picked the wrong leg. You have to sell it at 10, which means you're losing like 60% of the options value or 30% of the options value because the bid ask spread is, is massive here. So you get in at the high, you get out at the low of the spread. And because it's so wide, you put in that thousand dollars. Let's say you put in sixteen hundred dollars. You sell it for a thousand. You're losing six hundred bucks on that trade just from the spread. So the the other downside is there might only be one contract here at sixteen, and then the next sellers are at eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So if you had a large order, you might have to push your order in your your price is up a lot more to get it fully filled. So even though it says 0 0.10, 0 0.16, it could be even wider just because there's no volume. So you never know where those those buyers and sellers actually are unless you look at the, the order chain or the option um, order books. So lo low liquidity is what really makes it hard to profit. Again, if you can control something to succeed, you have no excuse on why you, know, you can't do this one thing to give yourself a better chance of making money. So even if like you had a good trade on this stock, the option chain may not even move. Even if it does move, you might not be able to get filled anywhere near the price you got in. So it'd have to move a lot to even move this to 16. The other thing is I see all traders making this. It doesn't just refer to options, but buying with a terrible entry, options, they're decaying. Options are very tough to make money with. If you don't buy at the right place at the right time, you're never going to succeed. So the one thing with 
entering in trades is I tell the traders inside the group this a lot, is the zero line is a very safe place to enter, especially in a trend. If you're buying anywhere outside the zero line, don't even be confused why you're not making money and why you're losing on a, even a winning trending trade. Right here, SPY today, we ran from 438 all the way to 444. That's a major move in SPY, almost like 1.2%. And this was three opportunities to get in. You know, where you're given one here at the zero line, which is where an oscillator crosses from negative to positive. This could be the RSI, this could be a MACD. Another here at the zero line, another here at the zero line. So three opportunities. If you were looking to get into this trend, you would have been an idiot trying to get in anywhere else. So if you're a new trader, waiting for the zero line is key. It's, it's probably the best thing you can do as a new trader is wait for safe entry. So let's say you entered up here at the orange candle. Orange candles are the most extended. Because of this trend being so great, you know, you would have gotten away with that being a profitable trade, but we pulled back right after. Another orange candle, huge pullback. So again, if we're extended on indicators, not really the best time to get in. So we always look for safer entries, could be a trend line, could be an EMA cloud, could be a moving average, could be a zero line cross. And so the zero line cross is from the market mover. This is what I designed. You can try it 10 days for free, no credit card needed. It's a fun indicator. I'd love to see what you guys think. I'd love to get your opinions on it. But you can see this chart here. A lot of great zero line crosses. I'm just initiating some trends. And so if we do have a great trend, we do want to wait for any touches to a zero line. And lastly, I think we have two more, three more. Never go all in. This should be self-explanatory. Never put yourself in a position where one trade makes or breaks you. The problem with trading is it takes a long time to be successful. So if I said, you know, you're going to be a great trader in five years, you'll be a multimillionaire. But if you blow up your account today or next week or next month, it might take you six years or it might take you seven years. Every time you blow up your account, let's add another, you know, one year to how long it takes you to succeed. Because when you blow it up, you give up. You know, you take a month off, you take three months off. And so if you keep blowing up your accounts, you delay that possibility of having a successful streak or successful strategy found um, in the future. So for me personally as a trader, it took a lot longer than most people do. I think four years was me. Um, but during that time, I had plenty of great runs. But those runs ended up going busted because I went all in towards the end of it being dumb. You know, I had great 30K runs, 20K runs, blew it up in one trade. And nowadays, don't do that. I've learned how to avoid it. I've learned how to be smart. And it all comes down to not going all in. If I feel like I need to go all in, I just, you know, stop trading, take a break, take the money out if I need to, and uh, reset till I start becoming more rational. And lastly, more importantly, never play earnings. I think it's obvious at this point that options during earnings is dumb because the options are inflated. There's a lot of IV in it. There's a predicted move. If it doesn't move as much, the options are going to have an IV crush. And if you can't beat the move, you're going to get crushed holding any of the options, honestly, because there's a huge move priced in. So uh, earnings, even if they're good, stock can drop. Even if they're bad, stock can pop. There's so many other factors that you don't really see, including the fact that the earnings call and the future guidance is probably the most important factor that nobody can predict. So we all are looking at the numbers, but we already typically know the numbers. And even if they hit the numbers, it doesn't matter. We're always looking at the future. And the, the price of the stock is pricing in the future and the new products develop. They're pricing in everything. It's a very efficient market, as they call it. So the market efficiency is going to price in that new information after earnings. And so you just don't know how the market's going to react to it. And however the market prices it in is how the market falls or drops the very next day. And the, uh, playing earnings is I've never met a profitable earnings trader and continue to believe there's not one out there. So don't pretend like you're going to be one of a million and the only one that's ever done it. 
Um, just try to go with something that people have been successful with and don't try to break the mold. It's not that hard. If you guys want to learn more on what to do as an options trader, I'm going to link a video to the right of me. If you want to trade for free with me seven days, hit the link below. We'd love to have you on my next live stream. Peace out. Have a great day.